loves is Dr. Simone Ellis. And today I am so excited to have beyond beyond the chair, Dr. Ali. And he is coming from across the pond. Can we just give him a warm welcome? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Thanks, Dr. Simone. It's an honor to be here. Um, it's really good. We've got a holiday here in the UK today due to the coronation of the king over the weekend. Um, so I'm just enjoying my day off um, and enjoying this podcast. Yes, let's talk a little bit about what you guys are doing o across the pond. Or is that, is that how the, 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 the lingo is? Uh, the coronation. Yeah, <laughs> the coronation. I was, of course, watching it online. Tell me a little bit about how you feel about it. Like, tell me about what that experience is, because I'm excited you know, that's not something we do over here in the States. We just have elections, right? And you guys have elections for the prime minister, but there's this whole thing of the monarchy. So tell me a little bit about your thoughts and your feelings about everything. Yeah, I mean, you're saying that you just have elections, but watching over the pond from my side, they seem to be pretty saucy as well. So, um... <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in terms of the coronation, yeah, it's great, obviously, uh, to crown the king. You know, they say the British are really good at pageantry and, and kind of um, putting on these kind of shows. And I think they did it really well. Um, I'm always going to miss the queen. You know, she was my monarch. Uh, she, she was uh, over 70 years. Obviously, she was the queen of the UK. So most people haven't ever seen an ex uh, another monarch aside from her. Um, but it's cool to see what Prince Charles will do. You know, he's not my number one. Queen Elizabeth will always be my number one. But, um, you know, it's nice to have a show. And ultimately, it's nice to have a day off. No one's going to complain about that. I mean, seriously, if we could get days off when we have elections, like that would be a whole vibe. So I'm going to put that out there. Let's see if we can get that <laughs> to happen. But while you are here on the show today, guys, you were in for such a treat because honestly, I am excited about having the conversation about what dentistry looks like, you know, differently in different places. But also, you're killing it. You're crushing the game. And as a young doctor, Doc, you are getting so much notoriety. And I got to tell you, it's beautiful to see from this side. So one was a fan of you on Instagram and then getting an opportunity to see your accolades and your work. And from one cosmetic dentist to the other, you are just doing the damn thing. So I have to keep saying that because I don't think enough times we get celebrated like that. You know, people want us to change their smiles, but from a colleague to another colleague, I just want to start off with saying you were doing amazing things. So can we talk a little bit about how you even got here? Like your background, what college you went to, um, when you graduated, what made you even start dentistry? And then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of what makes you you. So run, run the audience a little bit about your background. Sure. So um, thank you, first of all, for your kind words. Um, always lovely to hear. Um, so I studied in Cardiff University, um, which is the capital of Wales, um, a part of the United Kingdom. Um, so we did obviously the dental degree, which is five years in the UK. Um, I'm not sure how long it takes in America or if you have to do a degree beforehand, I'm unsure. But we can go straight from uh, college, which I believe you call high school, uh, into the dental degree program five years. And then you kind of leave dental school. If you've not skipped any years, you'll be about 23 years old. Wow. Um, so you you go straight from, okay, so for us, it's high school and then college. And there are some programs, but it's really rare that you can do like a three-year undergrad degree and then kind of migrate into the dental school portion, which is four years. So you come out and you're about 25, 26. You're telling me that we bypass college go straight to dentistry is a dental school is that correct exactly so our first college is dental school um so yeah straight from high school uh into the dental degree so you're graduating at about 23 years old wow. so you know we have a three-year leg up on you guys to begin with Heck so that's yeah. got something to do with why i am where i am at the age i am uh, more than anything else, probably. But, well, I can uh, tell yeah. from your your good beard that there's not a lot of grays in there. So I'm like, you are killing it. At what age? How old are you? <laughs> there's definitely a few. I'm 29 years old. I'm turning 30 this year. Okay. Um, I don't know if we call that young or we call that middle or we call that old. But you know, I'm I'm I still think I'm young. I feel young, and I feel like I have a lot more to prove uh, and to achieve. And I've definitely got a vision for the future. I love that. Going back to yeah, so going back to graduating from dental school, initially, to be honest, cosmetic dentistry wasn't on my radar at all. Um, I know a lot of dentists nowadays kind of, you know, cosmetic dentistry is so much out there now versus 
10 or, or 15 years ago but uh when i was going through dental school it was just about passing the exams really um that mm -hmm. was all it was and then uh getting into working i actually wanted to do uh maxillofacial surgery so that was kind of what i was uh aiming to do and that's kind of what really interested me and even to this day i really enjoy surgery um after doing that in the hospital for a year after my training year after graduating uh just doing so many a and a and e shifts and having a really kind of hectic balance between 12, 12 hour night shifts and 12 hour day shifts uh i kind of thought i'd just take a break and go into general practice and try it for a year okay uh, and i really enjoyed it and things sort of snowballed from there nice so talk to me a little bit about like that transition from your residency from saying okay i'm taking call i'm doing all these surgeries and i'm I like it, but I kind of want to see what general is like. And then I like the cosmetic side of general. So walk me through that. So I, I really loved uh, working in the hospital doing, you know, so we did wisdom teeth extractions. Um, we were assisting in kind of like uh, cancer operations, A&E. We had to do lots of like closing wounds and, and wound control and, and, and uh, doing things like that. A lot of primary medicine. Um, the thing I really disliked was kind of the balance of it, like having, you know, really hectic hours. Uh, I'm someone who really likes to have a routine and a schedule and to know exactly what I'm doing and to have a body clock that's exactly kind of set, you know, going to sleep at one time and waking up at one time. I know that's not the same for everyone, but that's what I really like. So that kind of really messed with me uh, for that year. So I just kind of wanted to try something different. And in my head, I always thought that if it didn't work out, I'd kind of just go back because I had a really good year there anyway. I did my sedation training there. I did my sedation training there as well. Um, so going into general practice, um, I found my second passion in dentistry aside from surgery, which was photography. Um, so I picked up a camera, start, started taking pictures, um, quickly segueing to my background with cameras. I really enjoy cars, car meets, the car scene. Um, so I've been taking photos of cars for a very long time. So kind of just modified one of my cameras, started taking photos of teeth. Um, and I think it was the photography that kind of walked me into cosmetic dentistry, yeah. because when you start looking at your work, um, you automatically start thinking about, well, how could I improve this? Whereas normally you might do a dental procedure and totally forget about it if you've been seeing a few patients, if you have no record of it. Um, but just going through that camera at the end of the day, looking at work I'd done, you could see, well, this looks really good um, or this doesn't look so good or this looks absolutely horrible. And then you kind of know for the next time what you needed to do to get that photo to look even better. And for that photo to look better, your clinical work had to be better. Mm. And if your clinical works better, your patient's going to be more happy. So it kind of snowballed in that way. And obviously the social media account, uh, you know, Instagram's made for photos or it was back then. So it was just a really easy pathway to just get content out there, uh, which again, I enjoyed. I already had a car Instagram account. And um, yeah, people started um to message me to come in and see me uh they weren't so we weren't as saturated then on instagram with dentists and uh you know just like any great endeavor lots of hard work and uh the snowball effect and kind of just being consistent for a long period of time uh gets me to where i am now and hopefully somewhere even greater in the future and I definitely want to get into like your passions and your purpose because you talked about photography. So I'm going to put a pin in that one because that's going to be a good topic for us. Because of course, like on this podcast, my goal is to make sure people know like, how do you become amazing? But like, what is the work that's done outside of the dental chair to make us great? And you really are just starting to talk on that. So I love that. And I want to make sure I announce one of your biggest accolades, which was the best young dentist by the dentistry award. Like we got to talk about that. How did you, how did that feel to get that? I mean, there's tons of young doctors out here and even with your UK system, which I think is really cool because you guys have to know really early on that you want to be a dentist because if you're coming right out of what we call high school and you guys call college, that's teenage years. So I mean, let's talk about one congratulations on such an amazing accomplishment there. I, I don't like to downplay any type of wins. If you get one, I'm celebrating it. So cheers to that. Um, walk you. me through how that experience was. And then to know at such a young age, because you had to know that you wanted to be a dentist. Like, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so thanks so much again. So in terms of the dentistry awards, um, you know, I've always loved um, kind of like events, pageantry, um, competitions, things like that. 
Um, it's just a great way to kind of get the blood flowing and kind of get you doing something a little bit different. I remember in the early years, uh, I think I was must have been sort of 24, 25, a few years out of dental school, just thinking, yo, these clinicians who are winning these awards, they look really amazing. They're doing great things. Um, and I would love for that to be me someday. Uh, it's called, uh, obviously, the Best Young Dentist Award. So it's out there for any dentist under the age of 35 um, to, you know, submit a portfolio um, just of everything and kind of see what happens. Um, I always knew I wanted to go for it. So I think three years out of dental school, um, I applied and I think I was lucky because I loved my photography. So I always mm. had loads of pictures and I've always been a very visual person. So I can put a really good kind of stack um, or offering together. Uh, and um, I thought my work was looking decent at that point. And I actually made it as a finalist. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. In fact, I was shocked. Um, and I was like, wow, you know, maybe I've got a chance of actually winning this someday. So uh, we fast forward to the following year, um, I was 26 or 27 years old. Um, so it's, we're actually going back quite a long way right now. Um, <laughs> Not that and, far. <laughs> uh, and we're talking about, and we're, and we're, and we're talking about, you know, uh, normally people who are winning have been practicing dentistry for kind of five, six, seven years plus. Yeah. Um, and I was about three or four years in. And, and, and I remember this to the day because uh, when it, uh actually it was 2020 it was the year of covid so um the event for the first time ever was held virtually and not in person and which meant it was a bit sad because yeah. uh we were kind of all watching on a live stream uh, and i remember i was actually working late that evening and i genuinely didn't think there was a chance in hell of me winning uh, and the evidence for that is i literally had patients booked in so <laughs> i was working through the ceremony um you know just kind of putting that work in and one of our nurses had left and gone home and put the dentistry awards on because uh one of her friends had applied uh or had uh, submitted an application for best nurse um or best nursing team and i just remember my phone kind of blowing up uh just right after seeing a patient um and just absolutely being in shock and hearing that I'd actually won <laughs> um, and laughing at the fact that I totally missed the whole live stream and everything like that. <laughs> you missed so, your time um, to shine and like do I missed, your I whole missed life. My time. So not only, not only, not only was it not in person, so I couldn't walk on and shake anyone's hand and pick up the award, you know, physically, but I also, yeah, totally missed the live stream. Uh, so Can I ask why like did you think that you weren't, uh, was that like an imposter syndrome? Like what was the reason why you didn't feel like you were going to win? I think it, I think it was imposter syndrome. You know, I yeah. genuinely, you know, when you're in any competition, you size up the competition, right? Yeah. So, uh, I genuinely looked at those clinicians on a sheet with, with me and a lot of them had a lot more experience than me. And I genuinely thought that, um, you know, in, in as certain aspects of dentistry, uh, they were a lot better than me. You know, there were people who were better surgeons than me. There were mm -hmm. probably people who were better at specific cosmetic things than me. Um, and I just thought, you know, uh, I was a finalist last time. It would be great to be a finalist this time. Um, I, I, when I when I put that application in, it wasn't to win the awards. It was because I thought I would definitely make finalist again if I did it. And I could slowly kind of improve my offerings from there. And maybe in a few years time, maybe four or five years, um, I could win it. So I was genuinely totally mm. shocked. It wasn't even a consideration in my mind. Um, and then it kind of happened. So, you know, it was crazy. Uh, I love that. Yeah. And I think that that's really um, one of the reasons why I think that that's dope of how you said it is, is that you put it in to become better, right? Like you weren't putting it in just to say like, I'm the shit, like, I'm, I've done it, like, you guys should recognize me. You know, you put it in there because you're like, you know what, if I can at least get close to this, I'll know how to perfect my craft, become better at it. And I think that even that reason alone is kind of like really what sets you apart, right? People sometimes put things, you know, they put themselves into categories because they only want to win. And your thought process was, yeah, winning would be great, but like, I want to know how I can be better. How can I get better at my craft? How can I see something that I didn't see and alter it, make it better? for the next year um but in the flip side of that right sometimes we have to think about like you you get a chance to be at the table because you're good enough to be at the table and you got a chance to win because like you are deserving of the win you put in the work and when I look at your resume and I see how many 
CE classes you've taken. I don't know if that matters about years. Uh, for me, like as coming out of school, so I'm 10 years your senior. I'll be 40 next month. Oh my God, it's like a whole year. You don't look it at all. Well, you know, say it again so everybody else will know it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as a 40 year old, as your senior, when I came out of school, I was 26, right? Because that's usually about the age. And I opened my office one year after graduating. I take that back. So I was 25 and I opened my first office at 26. And I remember feeling that way, especially as a young doctor, like this road was, you know, uncharted. And how do I kind of navigate myself through there? And I was getting accolades and acknowledgement. And I'm like, wait a minute, I don't belong here. And I want to give you that advice and anybody else listening that's in the younger dentist category, because after you hit 10 years, they no longer consider you a young doc. So I'm now more seasoned. Um, you deserve an opportunity to be at the cha the table if you're putting in the work to be at the table, right? So I want to commend you on that. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, to be honest, I genuinely still get that feeling um, multiple times each year, you know, getting invited to places. Like a great example is last year, um, Align Technology, who kind of handle Invisalign uh, in, in the UK and Europe, uh, invited me out to their um, UK or EMEA summit, so Europe and UK and um they were like yeah you i was like cool how much do i need to pay and they were like you don't need to pay anything we're gonna send you out there and i was like wait really how's that <laughs> happening and they were like you're one of our top doctors like we 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 we, we sought out all of our top doctors and i was totally oblivious to that and um i met people on the conference in the same position as me and i'd always kind of thought in my head that they were light years ahead of me so um I just, yeah, I was like, why, why am I, at, literally exactly as you said it, why am I at the table with these people? And it was kind of like a big eye opener. Um, I think I'm kind of getting used to it, but I think it's also nice to sort of, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm curious to see what your thinking is on this, but I, I quite like being the underdog and feeling mm. like the underdog. Even if I'm not, I feel like it puts me in a good mental state to keep putting the work in, um, keep innovating, keep improving. Um, my worst fear is kind of just thinking I'm at the top and then just kind of doing what I'm doing and then just sort of kind of, you know, getting thrown to the wayside. That's sort of my little nightmare that I kind of think about sometimes, not all the time, uh, but I like to sort of keep in innovating. And I feel like the best way to do that is just to kind of always put myself one step below where I think I should be. And then that way I've always got somewhere to look up to. I love that. It's kind of like that grind, that grit that keeps you going is you, that's how you stay humble. Um, I love that. For me, it's just the concept of mediocrity. Like that makes me like nauseous. I don't know about anybody else, but the idea of just being average and ordinary when I'm like, I only have so much time on this earth to be amazing to bring as much energy as much light as I possibly can and so that's what drives me whether it's practicing or doing other things outside the chair right I just am like I just can't I can't stomach it I don't understand it so that's what for me is um is my driver it's like uh, I see what you're doing but kind of how can I make this better how can I continue to be better how can I push the envelope and also like for me as a minority like in I don't know how it is in UK but as a dentist as a minority as a minority woman it's just different there's not a lot of faces that look like me so I kind of feel like I want to carry a torch that makes this entryway for others a little bit easier seeing dentistry in this way um the familiarity of it like that's kind of my driver so i want to jump over to our next segment which is so what are you drinking and really this is just a way for us to talk about how do you unwind how do you relax after a really busy day because it's important as dentists as important as professionals in general that we have a good work-life balance so today because i am doing something international with my friend dr ali i am drinking baileys on the rocks i know it's like irish but you know i didn't have anything that was <laughs> <laughs> um, of the the British descent, but how do you how do you decompress? How do you unwind? And if you're not drinking, which is totally fine, what are you doing to become Ali and not Doctor Ali? Right? <laughs> sure, sure. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm not drinking. Um, uh, I've never kind of uh, drunk alcohol, but there's a few things that I love to do to unwind. Um, if I think of myself, so. I love driving. 
um i've always loved cars and driving so i will literally just get in my car sometimes and, and drive for kind of half an hour to an hour um what are we no driving where i'm going we're driving nowhere we're just kind of driving around no i said uh, what are we yeah. driving since you're into cars oh, what are we driving <laughs> what are we driving um so i'm a big jdm fan which means basically Jap modified like japanese cars um so i have a nissan uh gtr uh top secret spec with uh, most people probably don't know what that means but it's basically like a japanese car with loads of vents and loads of exhaust pipes and it makes a really loud sound so we're fast uh, and furious very in this. very very fast, fast and, and furious. literally 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 fast and furious think of brian walker's car in the second film um and uh yeah lots of it's black and gold uh and i just like yeah i like i like cruising um and yeah I, I you know just um get something on on the radio and i kind of just drive and then it's just a great way to uh forget about dentistry and, and exactly decompress what you're saying um another thing i really enjoy is video games so i've been a big kind of video game player um since literally childhood uh and i haven't managed to kick it yet because i've still got friends from university who play things like um call of duty warzone um and also pc games um i love multiplayer games i love put hitting myself against other people online um skill checking them hopefully winning sometimes losing um <laughs> but i love that kind of competition and when i'm playing video games i've got no time to think about dentistry um i love and I think the final thing is uh probably like the gym um and working on myself kind of i'm naturally a very very skinny person so if i kind of don't work out and i sort of just eat when i want to eat um i'm basically like a stick insect like i'm very very skinny um but i've got to a place over the last two or three years just for, from kind of regularly hitting the gym um and sort of eating a little bit more i'm kind of getting routines in place uh that i'm kind of happy with where i'm at but i also feel a lot stronger and i feel like being physically strong is linked to being mentally strong and being mentally strong is being is very is very heavily linked to being uh physically strong so you know it's kind of just sort of being the absolute ultimate best version of myself i can be at all times um is kind of the goal I love that. And so we got three things, guys. First, like he's taking time for himself, which I love. I'm also into cars, too. So I drive a Porsche Boxster and I like to go race it on the racetrack. Um, I'm not a good driver, but I mean, who's to say like I can't be on the Fast and the Furious, too? It's all relative. Look, it's all relative. You know, you'll be totally a good driver relative. for someone. You'll be a good driver for someone. So I love that idea, but just the opportunity to just kind of let your hair down literally and the top down for me literally is how I decompress. <laughs> the second thing is your video gamer. So having that connection with other people and whooping their ass on the video games, I think is super dope. Um, it's a good way to relieve <laughs> the stress um, and working out. We share that similar. Um, I am a big person about Anybody that's listened to anything that I do, I talk about the morning huddle, and that is for myself, which is what I do to decompress every morning. I spend 10 minutes meditating, 10 minutes reading something, and then 10 minutes stretching before I go and do my workout. And the workout time, I have do not disturb on my phone because I want to make sure that the day, the world, has not come into my space before I've had an opportunity to pour into myself and get myself situated. So. So um, I think that those common threads that we talk about, which is taking care of yourself first, first, before you take care of anybody else is super important, especially when it comes to our industry, right? Because again, I was talking to Dr. Patel and, and a couple other guests previously before, but we don't realize how much we pour into others. And it is so important that we are physically ready to take on the world before we have to, you know, basically do it so I want to be healthy I want to be fit on my own um on my own terms I can't say that I align with like naturally being skinny I'm kind of jealous so as soon as I <laughs> eat a cheeseburger it is on my hips it is on my thighs today we, we went to I went to New York this weekend and I like just acted like I didn't have any type of sense I ate everything that I wanted and I got on the scale this morning and was like 
How is this even possible to gain this much weight in two days? Um, so I am like viciously trying to get this off. I know it takes me like five days to get off a few pounds, but I wish I had that. You have my brother's genes. Like he doesn't have to eat a whole lot and he naturally gets skinny. And then when he eats, it's like a muscle comes out of nowhere. We can't vibe on that. <laughs> But I do want to kind of talk now a little bit about being a young doctor. And my first question to you is, is tell me a little bit about what that's like and what are some of the obstacles that you feel like young dentists are facing during this day and age? And how do you, outside of your dental chair, figure out ways to help, like, you know, alleviate some of those things that are causing problems? Um, I think for young dentists... There's a few uh, things, and this is probably a really big, broad topic that we could talk about for a long time. For me personally, I think uh, in the advent of social media, um, it's kind of permeated every aspect of our lives, uh, or it has for me, uh, maybe not everyone. But um, I think, you know, it has benefits and drawbacks. So I think some young dentists can kind of, or even be in dental school, uh, and kind of see, you know, really amazing, life-changing work um, that at the time seems like absolute uh, light years away from kind of uh, where you as a dental student or as a newly graduated dentist are. Um, and, you know, obviously in the positive kind of ways, it can inspire you and kind of kind of really light your fire. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it kind of it can also the ugly side is it can kind of just make things seem so far away and you Again, social media is uh, in that way is kind of like many other things in life where mm. you often just see the absolute best outcomes, um, you know, the, the, the kind of sexiest dentistry that you could ever see. And sometimes if that's all you're scrolling through, that can seem like the normal thing to be kind of putting in your output. And then if you compare that to your own work. Um, it can make you seem like you're not doing that well when in reality kind of everyone faces the same struggles right. um, and ultimately you know everyone kind of gets better over time so that's one thing social media um, another thing in the UK so I'm not sure what it's like in the states um, but there's a big uh, there has been a big climate of fear probably over the last five or ten years with our regulator being very heavy-handed so um tell me what that we have is the G so we have the gdc or the general dental council who's kind of like our overlord um so traditionally they're there to kind of protect patients so patients have an issue and they can't resolve it locally or they can't they kind of go up that ladder of um kind of escalating issues um they can take things in the worst extremes to the general dental council who can then kind of um, at worst erase you um, off the register so they can basically stop you working um, and I think we hit a place in UK dentistry where the kind of rates of you know dentists being suspended um, and erased was kind of going up and we were dentistry was becoming very litigious and very um, stressful so ergo lots more patients were kind of suing their dentists mm. and you know there's an argument for kind of thinking about communication um personally i've been very lucky i've had no issues to date uh, and i feel like my biggest strength is just talking to people i feel like i can literally get my superpower is i can just get on with anyone um mm. i talk to um you know and i've never had an issue like that but a lot of dentists kind of fear or th the extension of that is a lot of kind of young dentists almost don't want to go into more kind of complex things or they don't want to upskill or they don't want to try new things. And the kind of in an innovation uh, in the industry has really been tapered off um, because everyone kind of wants to stick to the status quo because they're worried if they try something new, um, something bad can happen. And if something bad can happen, um, they don't trust our regulator to be able to, to not be quite heavy handed. Um, so that's probably the two biggest things I'd say um, in the way of young dentists uh, that they kind of need to push through. Uh, to hopefully see those beautiful green pastures of what dentistry can be. And, and, that, and that's what I see now, uh, thankfully, and I'm very grateful for that. 
Yeah, I think that that's the, you know, one to address the social media. I do feel like dentists, especially during this period in time, like remember when I came out, which was like, uh, I came out in 2009. So social media was there, but it wasn't like this at all. Um, And so you have this comparison that's always happening, you know, or you start to suffer, I think, a lot of like paralysis by analysis, meaning that you're getting so much information so fast that you don't know what to do with it. Um, And like we just talked about that imposter syndrome where you're like, I don't know if like I'm supposed to be here because everybody is only showing their best. Um, and I think that regardless of who you are, um, a couple of things with this social media that I would recommend for doctors to look in doing is, is one, like, I have to de- I have to disconnect from social media at some points, right? So Sunday is my time where I'm not on any of the platforms. One, just because I know what it's built for. It is built to be addictive. It is built to be comparative. It is built for you to stay engaged. And although it has a lot of great things that it offers, like exposure and, um, you know, peaks creativity, and there's definitely a lot of inspiration and patience come from it. It also has a lot of negatives that can come with it, right? And so one of the things you have to know is yourself. Like for me, I'm trying to be informative in a space that is really about some of the, how do I say this? Social media is kind of like things that get more likes and more trends isn't necessarily like, nerdy and sexy if that makes sense right so if I talk to you about a process or procedure that is like how it will save you some time energy and effort that's not going to get as much hype as me putting on a swimsuit and like it's wild to me and one of my girlfriends told me this she was like remember you're appealing to the one percent and so dentists remember it's like one percent that's there for information and education the other 99 percent is a lot of like shock and awe so why I say that is you're not going to see a lot of the grind and the work that happens behind the scene because it's not sexy, right? You're going to see exactly. the shock and awe. So putting proper boundaries in place, I think, is important. Um, the other part that you were talking about is not being adventurous and not getting an opportunity to really realize your full self. And to me, that is really a challenge that I want people to push through, too, because you really don't know what you like in dentistry until you trial and error. Right. It's called practicing dentistry because you are practicing all the time. And I have two other doctors that work with me. Um, They're both one is really, really new to the industry. And she's like, why are you just so ambitious with what you do? And I said, I mean, it's practicing. I know that I'm going in here with the best skill set that I have with what I've learned my intentions are to give the best care possible but that means to give the best care possible and so that means that what I learned 10 years ago may not be the best care now because I know more I know how to do more there's more technology out here and so for any doctor that's listening to that like if you are limiting yourself you are stifling your ability not only to be creative and to be the best that you can be but also the best care you can give to anybody right like I don't want to have the latest and greatest technology that was popping 10 years ago I want to be cutting edge and it sounds like to me that that's some of the things that younger doctors are going to have to kind of push through yeah exactly um it's definitely maybe maybe in in the UK obviously we graduate a lot younger so we so we've kind of seen a lot less but um it's a huge huge jump I think I'm not sure how much they teach you in dental schools in the US but um even kind of what you, I, for me, I felt like what we learned in dental school to kind of um, the skills processes, uh, which are really important in the actual kind of real dental world were sort of totally different, um, you know, much less academic, although there's always going to be a place for that, um, but much more kind of procedure driven, mindset driven, communication driven, um, things that probably weren't highlighted or asked the risks as much. So sometimes as a new graduate, you can feel a little bit like, a, you know, a a young kind of deer in the headlights uh, of the dental world. Um, But ultimately, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And uh, I want dentists to know that there is kind of a great side to it and a great place that you can reach. Um, And it's possible, it's absolutely, totally possible to practice dentistry five days a week and, and, and enjoy it, even though it is, you know, strenuous and you are kind of pouring it out. But if you're ticking all the boxes, you're doing the right things and you feel comfortable within what you're doing, 
um, you can really kind of love and enjoy your job, which I'm lucky to say that I do. I love that. And so what makes you different? Because you're pushing that status quo, right? You're, you're, you're overcoming that feeling of like, all right, let's not be resistant. Let me try innovative things. So, you know, why, wh why is that a part of your DNA? Like, what are the drivers? Like, what is making you say, you know what, like, I feel that, but like, I'm got to still keep pushing forward, because maybe some doctors are having trouble with now they understand these are the things and these are the obstacles, but you're pushing past that. How and why? For me, um, I hate kind of do, for me, it's kind of more looking into myself. I sit down every year and kind of just think about um, what new things I can kind of do. Uh, and I always want to be kind of pushing the envelope uh, just to myself and kind of making sure I'm always doing new things. Um, if I can see a way of doing something better, it just feels wrong to me not to do it or not to learn to do it. Uh, and I think uh, it might be like a bit of a kind of obsessive personality trait that I have, but I just have to do everything uh, in the best way possible. And I and just like you, I want to offer the best care that I physically can. Uh, and we're in a profession, we're lucky to be in a profession where technology is always moving forward, new technologies are always coming out. Um, so I almost kind of feel like a little child in a candy store sometimes where, you know, you almost go to a dental show and you see 10 or 12 things that you'd love to implement right now and there just isn't the time for it. Um, but, you know, ultimately there's one or two or three things that you can take away and you can improve uh, because nothing ever stays the same. The industry will never stay the same. What patients are looking for will never stay the same. Patient expectations will never stay the same. Your physical abilities will change over time. So, you know, dentistry is not only kind of physically you practicing on a moving target, your whole dental career is kind of a little bit of a moving target in terms of you need to always kind of better yourself to, to be in the best position possible. Um, and, you know, the feeling of satisfaction that you can kind of get when you sort of achieve something or you do something new and it works out and the patient's really happy, you know, it feels great. And those wins are kind of what I'm looking for, those kind of affirmations to myself to say, I've done something great today, I've done something really good. And then that kind of snowballs onto the next thing. I love that. And what's your tribe look like? Like, what's your community look like? Like, who are the ones that are holding you to that standard? So it's probably a lot of people in a similar situation to me. So initially, to begin with, it was kind of my my teachers and my educators, and, and I still kind of speak to them a lot. And I really kind of respect what they're doing. Uh, right now, I would say, you know, between uh, there's I have a few colleagues uh, who are doing absolutely great things as young dentists in the UK, um, you know, doing amazing, amazing work that kind of inspire me every day. And we always kind of talk ideas. Um, just yesterday, I was at a dinner in Zuma in central London um, with a few other dentists who are doing amazing things, um, you know, uh, who are opening, you know, clinics up north. We're doing really well on social numbers um who kind of are really astute at business and just kind of talking about bouncing ideas off each other and we all took away so much from kind of what we were doing so i would say just other great dentists such as myself and also um just kind of my uh family like my parents um just uh, i feel like they're my mum and my dad are just absolute solid rocks for me they've always supported me in what i've done they always give me great advice um and i feel like having that grounding and also just being in a profession with so many things kind of jumping in the sky's the sky's the limit i love that i love that um for me like my tribe is a combination of multiple people not just in our industry but like outside of our industry as well um because i think that what's great about having different perspectives is that you can kind of apply everything to you know everyone so whether it's the people that i work out with and them keeping me sane mind body and soul right or whether it's my family like you said my husband or my uh, my niece and my nephew even give me perspective right because they're they look at life so soon simply. <laughs> And sometimes it really is that simple. It is as simple as uh, I, I, this key point came up to me where um, I'm driving my niece. I take her to dance class every Saturday and I'm like, Aria, uh, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm just looking at the clouds. 
And I was like, well, why? Why are you looking at the clouds? She said, sometimes you don't need a reason to look at the clouds. She's four. And I'm like, wait, what? She she gets it, right? Like sometimes you don't need a reason to just exist or just be around people or just absorb their energy. And so um, I try to pull from they don't have They don't have any inhibitions, you know? They don't care None. what anyone else thinks. They just want to do what they want to do. And I think that when we become adults and the world like hits us and we have experiences in life that fear sets in, that anxiety sets in, that stress sets in. And watching them is a great like part of my tribe to be like, you know what? Like, I want to just do this just because I don't have any reason, but I'm going to go after it. So um, another question I have is because I don't get a chance to talk to a lot of providers overseas. This is what do you see is different from the UK versus the US as far as dentistry and how we are doing dentistry over here versus how um, you are doing dentistry over there or maybe there's a lot of similarities uh, walk me through kind of like what's the experience across the pond <laughs> so across the pond um, I think there's kind of two parts to this so the first point is obviously with globalization with social media with kind of you know people being able to you know travel anywhere on the planet within a few hours I think the dental world has become and, and the whole world in general has become a much smaller place so things have definitely got more similar we've taken on um many good things from the us and the, and you know clinicians in the us have taken on great things from us i think traditionally it's always kind of been seen at least from dentists in the uk that dentists in america are kind of brought up or trained up to be a little bit more invasive than we are hmm. um i'm talking about you know like there's this kind of like running joke in the UK and if you'll humor me um you know it's just a joke obviously it's not I serious love it. anyway, let's, let's, let's but... go in and hurt, <laughs> hurt let's go and hurt the US feelings come on <laughs> we've, got like, we've got like you know uh, I'm sorry to all the US viewers I love you all I love your accent um but we have this little joke that um it's kind of like a bit of a meme where like a patient comes in in three kind of different totally separate scenarios um and they're like what's my solution doctor and each one's the same thing it's like 36 veneers um or 36 <laughs> crowns um and it's like you know what you're not wrong if you kind of rip it you can always tear down the house and build a new one you always can you know that option's always there um but you know sometimes maybe it's not necessary um and i realized that that's not you know that's totally a huge I love generalization it. i can totally I see mean that it <laughs> It's like, wait, hey, I've got this. Uh, you need tw you need 36 veneers. 36 hey, I've, veneers I've on 36. all of the teeth. You don't even have 36 just, just, teeth. Just we're just doing them. them. <laughs> you know, if we're from, why fix 20 when we could fix 36, you know? <laughs> um, you know, can you go and grow more teeth so we can do let's just let's get that. your let's get your let's get your baby teeth done first. Uh, the baby so teeth cool. first. <laughs> So we get 20 at the beginning and then 36. So we get 56 over your lifetime. All then, day. You know, we're doing veneers we on go. anything, Literally. apparently. <laughs> I love that. Well, let me welcome you to my factory um, <laughs> of dental veneers. Um, so, yeah, we it's it's a little bit of a joke, a bit tongue in cheek, because there's clinicians who are doing things much more non-invasively, obviously. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, that's kind of like a little bit of a perception that we have that we kind of we like to wait and watch a little bit more uh may, sometimes wrongly in some scenarios you know uh i i had a i had a dental um educator um in wales so his actual thing was um even if he could see tooth decay if it was kind of only just starting to be in the enamel he was like you know what it's, as long as they kind of stop eating sugar um, and this might be a super controversial topic and people might hate me for this. This is why I'm saying this is hundred percent my educator and not me, but, um, <laughs> he was, <laughs> so you can, I'll, I'll forward his email. After, right. Actually, I won't. You're like, I if, won't I, if I get email. hate mail, I'm sending it all to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I'm just going to link, I'm just going to link his email. Um, but, uh, he's like, you know, if, they, if they're not eating sugar, they ain't going to get no more tooth decay. So fix their diet, put a little bit of fluoride on it and then check it again in a year's time. If it doesn't get any worse, then you kind of know you've done the right thing. If it gets worse and it's kind of into dentine, you know, or if it cavitates, then you know we'll stick a filling in. Um, whereas you know other dentists in the UK as well, but perhaps seen kind of more abroad, will will kind of put a filling on anything that moves, which is that that's <laughs> kind of you know an, another way. And and I think it's a spectrum, right? Um, you know, there's jokes about Australian dentists. You know, I, I'm getting 
I don't want this to come up. Let's go. Let's fa- anyway. let's go global but, since you're like this in the um, U.S. Let's go yeah. ahead and dis- so just. Like, this is this is just. I'm talking about educators that I've had in the past who always obviously you know much more experienced than I'm. But they would kind of make jokes about um, Australian dentists who often used to travel to the U.K. because. Uh, the qualifications between um, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK are very similar. So we don't actually have to do any entrance exams to go that way. And I believe it used to be the case, or it still is the case, that it's the same for them when they come to the UK. Um, but uh, they developed, uh, w- w- whenever you see a p- patient with just loads of MOD amalgam fittings, like <laughs> down their eight, their seven, their six, their five, their four, uh, the, the term for it was called Australian trenches. So you'd see those patients and you'd be like, Oh no! Um, did you have did you have did you have an Australian dentist? They'd be like, you know, what? I actually did um, about five or ten years ago. And uh, so you know, there's all these kind of little kind of geographic quirks that we have um, so in I the UK. To... You know, we like to have it. We ha- we like to have a little bit of fun. Um, you know, and that's and that's all it is. But yeah, I think I think there are differences, but I think we're getting very very similar. And I think, you know, with a more globalized society and with education, obviously traveling overseas just by virtue of me and you talking today. Yeah. um, I think things are kind of uh, evening out a little bit, but there will always be differences of opinion, right? Oh, absolutely. And I love that that's the tongue in cheek because of the fact that over here, I was going to say one of our (laughs) one of our jokes is, is that if you have a... (laughs) If you have like really, I'm gonna, product... for, I'm gonna go ahead and forward them your email. <laughs> I don't. Um... <laughs> I, I, I'm just like, should I say this? Out no, no, no. But... I want you to say. It. I want you to say. It. I want to hear this. We're just like, this. oh, like when I have patients from the UK, I'm like, oh, you, like you guys just don't care about your teeth. You don't care what position they are, the color <laughs> they are. So the fact that the fact that you said the veneer part where we are like everything needs to be white. That's the joke over here. Is like, oh, if you're from the UK, you clearly don't care about your color of your teeth, and it's just. It's funny that that's the thing <laughs> because you'll see like celebrities and you're like so does no one have a dentist over here like does no <laughs> one care but I think that what it is is that really like you said social has made a really big difference as far as bridging these these gaps <laughs> so to speak bridging the gaps I like what I did there. Did y'all see that? It's general related. Uh, yeah. da, da, da. I'll be here uh-huh. all day. Um, but, you know, <laughs> bridging the gaps and kind of getting us to be and having the same conversations or talking about standard of care, right? Um, because for us, like, we were taught in my dental school experience, especially when it comes to pedo kids, like, we're not doing fillings on baby teeth. Like, that's a, sti- that's a silver cap all day because who wants to sit there and try to do an MOD on a five-year-old child, like, that is not a thing, right? But that may be considered aggressive um, to other other um, other dentists. I don't see as many kids. I really try to just see mostly adults. Um, but yeah, that's a difference. And probably hearing some of your professors, that would probably be like a nightmare. Like kids would be like, wait, what? You're going to put a silver cap on a tooth? And I'm like, you tell me if I'm about to sit here and go through a whole hollering match with somebody just to try to get a matrix band on the MOD. Like I'm not doing that. I could do a stainless steel crown really quickly on this kid. So I definitely think that those are some differences. Um, what about the stress rate? Um, I don't know how it is in the UK, but in the States, um, of course, dentistry is one of the highest suicide rates um, here. Um, and of course, we can go into all of the reasons why, but is that the same thing over in the UK? And if so, what are some of the things that you believe doctors need to do to help balance that out? I think it's very similar in that way. I think I think um, we also have kind of one of the highest suicide rates, um, you know, one of the highest lowest mood rates, one of the highest kind of depression rates or however you want to call it. I think... One of the biggest reasons is uh, dentistry can sometimes feel very, um, it can be very isolating as a profession. Um, It's easy to kind of fall into it, become so reliant on it uh, for it to kind of define 95% of your life. Um, And you can kind of get into a little bit of a rut. and, and, And as a dentist in that kind of surgery, I don't know what it's like in the States, but normally most dental practices are quite small one two three surgeries and you're spending 90 percent of your time in a room just with one other person uh and you know if they're not talking you're kind of just thinking to yourself the whole time uh so it can be quite um isolationist uh and i think 
if you're you know susceptible to kind of negative thoughts it can kind of lend itself in that way um in kind of sometimes it is kind of you against the world mm. um you know that one of the greatest things i find about dentistry is i get to meet loads of new people but at the same time conversely if you're meeting loads of people you know some of them might not be the nicest people mm. uh and also uh just being by virtue of being a dentist you'd hope you're someone that kind of cares about others so um some people can find it really difficult to uh separate their own lives from their patients problems and uh they can kind of really take on stress and sorrow uh from patients and not shake it and the problem with you versus the patient is the patient just has their own problems but you as a dentist if you're going to kind of do that you're going to take on thousands of people's mm -hmm. problems and uh if you're not kind of in the right mental state to deal with that um that can you know snowball it can affect your clinical work and um in turn that can lead to kind of more negative thoughts which lead to worse clinical work which leads to worse communication which can lead to resentment and i i feel like you know i'm very big on this um doing the little things right kind of snowballs into the really big wins um but the same can be said for kind of you know letting those negative thoughts kind of creep in or being in environments where those kind of negative thoughts are fostered um can again snowball into something really bad which obviously you know suicide um is a horrible thing but we have to address it because it is definitely something that plagues the profession um but i think yeah i think it's tricky but i'm glad that people like you know you were here spreading that positive energy and i think we need more people like you um just kind of promoting the fact that there are things to do outside of dentistry which the beauty of them is it will make your dentistry better right. in terms of sometimes if you can switch off and not think about dentistry and develop other passions and you know uh, maybe take some time off enjoy yourself and you know live your absolute best life um when you're not thinking about dentistry at all that itself can have a positive impact on your dentistry and your mindset within dentistry um, and I think more people kind of need to do that. And we're slowly starting to see a shift to that. I think people are starting to take more time for themselves. Uh, I think associates in the UK tend to on average now work uh, three to four days a week, actually, rather than five days a week. Mm. Um, so people definitely are taking time for themselves. But, uh, you know, you, you can't let dentistry define you. You know, it's it's just a job. And this is another joke we have that about people in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get into a slanging match with really, you. I love it. Let's but, um, just go. We, Let's we, just go. We, we kinda, it's kinda Call of like, Duty dental style. Let's I'm go. Gonna, I'm going to get the boxing gloves on. I've got like my hand <laughs> little, you know, I might as well get the, um, I'm ready to. I'm ready. Southpaw. But, um, so, but we have this thing where we say uh, people in the U.S., uh, you know, sometimes their job can be their life. Um, oh, that's not know, a joke. Really that's like it. a real, that, that's a real thing here. <laughs> that yeah, is a yeah. real thing yeah exactly which you know if it's the best job in the world then great amazing but you know if it also means that kind of that's all all you have to a large degree if something's not happening the way you want it to happen it can have a really big lasting impact on you um so you know we we like to take time off we like to kind of have our passions and our interests and i think obviously that can go a long way to kind of realizing that ultimately it's just teeth teeth are really important and we love teeth more than anything else in the world um but there's so many other things you can do uh to kind of be happy enjoy life and and you know make the most of our limited time on planet earth i love that and it's just teeth it is just teeth um one of the things I want to kind of echo with what you said that I thought was really dope was the first thing is taking the time for yourself and this desire, this need to like, like let go so that you can come back in. So you like surgery. I like surgery. And sometimes it's like a tooth that, you know, is like, oh, my God, why are you tripping with me? Like, this is not I can't stand like how long this is taking me. Anything that takes me, honestly, like five minutes to take out. I'm already frustrated. I'm like, this should have been out. Right. And then I'll tell Take an opportunity to step out the room. I'll deglove. I'll decompress for a second. I'll breathe. And then I'll come back in there and I'll have a whole new fresh set of eyes. And I think about that with my profession all the time. Um, and I think that having the permission, I think dentists a lot of times don't give themselves permission to take off. When I first opened, 
um, I struggled with not being there five or six days a week. And then I struggled with letting other doctors come in and do other work. And I struggled and I struggled. And I realized in the process of this, like, I wasn't any better for it. If anything, I was causing myself to really burn out. And so now, like, for me, my goal is I work two days a week. I see all that I can in those two days. And it's an intense two days um, because I feel like I can produce what I was doing in these four and five days and two. But it gives me an opportunity to have passions outside of this. And for the negative talking, the negative discussions that just, I think, percolate in all of our brains, because I think that we go from having having you know feelings are you know transient they move um like like the weather does um I do this thing where I um first of course ask my patient what they want to listen to whether it's whatever type of music and I use this uh saying to my patients if you were going to a deserted island and you could only take five artists with you who are you taking? And what I'll do is I'll pick one of their five that they say from Alexa and I'll play that if they want to listen to music during their procedure or we have Netflix and um, Apple TV so they can actually watch a movie. And if they're doing that um, where they're not involved in the, the room, then I have my AirPods listening to either a podcast or jamming out some music because what I noticed is is that if I do have this silent time to allow my brain to go every single which way, sometimes it can go down a negative rabbit hole. Like we're seeing like I have three hygienists, so I'm seeing all of their patients plus my three rooms to check. Like I'm just seeing too many people. So sometimes my own thoughts get lost. And what I would tell any doctor that kind of feels like they're in a, like a space by themselves is pick some good music to jam out to. If you don't have good music to jam out to, pick a podcast. Do something that's going to keep your spirit lifted up. And one more thing that I always do, and I want to make sure I reiterate this to anybody listening, is, is I call it the doorway. Anytime I'm walking through a doorway anytime it's an arch I am changing the energy that I'm bringing in every single time I cannot bring the drama that was happening in in room one into room two because that patient doesn't deserve it right and I learned about this actually from Disney World's concept of they have two floors they have the front stage floor and then they have the basement. And what they're talking about is you never see Mickey Mouse running around Disney World with his head off, right? You never see any of these characters like having, you know, like other than being who they're supposed to be. Um, and what that means is, is that a lot of things are happening below ground. You see Mickey running across without his head and all the trash <laughs> and everything that's going on down below the ground. But above ground, what everybody sees is showtime. And so for me, every time I'm walking into a new doorway, I don't want to bring whatever was going on behind the scenes. I'm either, that's either in life, that's in... Um, work like any like I have a job to do my job is to perform excellent clinical dentistry but my job is also to lead the team that I'm leading and it's also to make sure the people that I'm working on have a great ass experience like that's they that's my job I'm supposed to give them good dentistry um, and I think that if we come in with that mindset sometimes that negative feeling that we're experiencing we recognize that like taking yourself out of the picture putting someone else in it doesn't mean that you don't deal with whatever negative thoughts that you're going I mean counseling I think is important having uh, I love that you do photography you just happen to pick a hobby that's popping right now like oh my god like that's a great one to have videography great one to have but picking things that are outside to help troubleshoot that that makes sense but while you're in that chair while you're in that room while you're leading people like that's my job to show up and I hope that everybody can kind of take that you know as well so all right this has been so much fun um, and I have loved your energy and your time. And so I want to wrap up with my fire round questions, which just are things that rapid fire, giving me your answers. And then we're going to have like a little recap. OK, so they're kind of funny, okay. um, but it's to show a little bit about your personality. So let's go. Fish and chips or burgers and fries? Burger and fries. Prince Charles or Prince Harry? Prince Harry. Okay, I like it. Um, uh, sex or chocolate? I love them both too much. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not choosing. I'm not choosing. <laughs> tequila or whiskey? 
Um, I wouldn't have either. I really like a virgin mojito. Virgin mojito. Okay, I like that. Um, skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding. Okay. Oh, you're a boarder. All right. Um, land or water? Land. Okay. Um, up or down? Up. Red or yellow? Red. All right. Awesome. Well, I want to, I want our guests to be able to know where they can find you. I have had so much fun picking your brain about dentistry. And the last thing I kind of want to know is, is manifest or mantra? What do you manifest or do you manifest? Because that's a big thing. We hear that word right now. Or do you live by a personal mantra? And as a young doctor who is taking over, um, I want to know what's next for you. So let's first answer manifest or mantra and if what are they and then what's next for you in terms of manifest or mantra i don't know how to kind of um define those specifically but one kind of thing that i always sort of have at the center of myself is that everything kind of starts with the mind if your mind's in the right place um, i'll give you a quick example when i'm in the car uh and when i park up at the dental surgery um i beat my chest like a gorilla for about five seconds oh you're doing the um, whole like uh what was that movie called uh, wolf of wall street yes! <laughs> i'm ready to go i'm ready to go i'm getting excited right you're now like, just doing that I'm oh like... yes <laughs> i love I was about that. to run into the surgery <laughs> but um you know you need to be you need to have your game face on um you know and that's kind of long term short term and medium term so um uh you need you know if you want to get fit meant i try to when i make decisions i try to make decisions based on being what the best version of me would do so uh whenever i kind of think of something i'm thinking if i was at the top of my game with all the energy in the world well fed perfect shape doing everything i want to be doing what would that version of me do and i kind of try and make my decisions based on that. So hopefully by making enough decisions in that way, I can become the best version of that possible. Um, but yeah, I think get your mind in the right place and the world's your oyster. I love that. I love that. And I'm going to be going to work tomorrow. Like, mm, is that what he was doing mm, with that? Do it. Do it, man. Honestly. And I want you to message me and let me know how you feel for that first patient. I'm going to be in the be car. Amazing. They're going to be like, what is going yeah. on with her? I'll be like, we're going like let's go you're going going into battle man you're going into battle just imagine like you know um you know i just think of a marvel movie you know just kind of when they're beating their kind of sticks and stuff and they're just ready to just go you know because life is war um in in the in the nicest and kind of most positive ways um you're kind of you're fighting with everything yeah um and uh it's about kind of just being ready for that i love that i love that What's next for you? Where do you see yourself in this next five or 10? Where are you, where are you going? So I don't have my own um, office right now. Okay. Uh, officially. Um, unofficially, I kind of am about to, and I haven't actually said this to anyone yet. <laughs> um, well, this is the perfect place to do but, it, right? <laughs> I let that slip. Um, but, uh, basically, yeah. So my, hopefully, uh, I'm going to be the next kind of, um, the next few years is going to be kind of opening my own places. So kind of focusing much more on the, uh, business side of dentistry. Um, and like you said, you know, kind of delegating things and kind of having other people kind of do stuff rather than just kind of focusing and relying on myself. Um, I feel like I'm in a place where I have a lot to offer and hopefully I can, you know, um, improve uh, other dentists' uh, lives and situations uh, and, and kind of build a team. Uh, so I can't, I'm, I'm kind of going from Iron Man to the Avengers. I think that's kind of what's happening. I need to kind of assemble my team and kind of take on, you know, the next big threat um with a team and you know stronger together and kind of all that malarkey so that's that's sort of what i'm going for next have my own clinic um hopefully my own clinics with ness and uh you know take things to the next level there and then um who knows in terms of uh cars um i'm looking at uh starting to become a professional race driver so it's something i've always kind of wanted to do nice. um i'm a very kind of uh normally my whole experience with cars has been unofficial very kind of car meets um on the streets kind of thing not on the tracks 
uh but uh i want to kind of you know take it legit and be like you know an actual like bona fide race driver so that's also something that i want to pursue for myself I love that. Well, as one Marvel fan to another, uh, I love that you are going to get your Avengers squad. Congratulations <laughs> on um, opening your own practice. That is a big feat, and I don't take that lightly from you, so I congratulate you. I'm excited about that celebration. If you ever need any advice, hit me up. I'm just your little girl over across the pond, but I got you, because um, we definitely need to stick together, especially when it Thank comes so to much. practice management. So, yes, let me know. So, where can my wonderful guest, um, where can they find you? So uh, my biggest outlet by far is dr.ali.dentistry on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, just by email, it's dentistrybyali at gmail.com. Um, so yeah, feel free to hit me up. And and likewise, you know, honestly, I, lo I love your energy. We, we, we've literally, people don't know this, but we've only been speaking for about a week or so. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I think we hit, I think we hit it off, man. So oh, this has yeah, been, I've, this I've really has been a total vibe. You. I've learned so much. And uh, yeah, if I'm ever down in Texas, I'll visit for sure. Oh yeah, like definitely. You got to pull up for sure. I got you. It has been a pleasure, Dr. Ali, having you on here. And this is not the last time we're talking. This is just the first time, but I'm expecting <laughs> many more times chatting with you uh, thank you guys so much for listening to Beyond the Chair it's your girl Dr. Simone Ellis and I look forward to taking you on your next little journey whether it is behind the chair or in front of the chair working on the business as well as in the business guys we are excited to have you and take care